Hi, everybody. Dorothy here, professional astrologer. You can find me on the web, nhastrologer.com. Of course, here on YouTube and Patreon, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. So today I'm going to talk about the week coming up. Oh my gosh, it starts with, of course, Monday, June 15th, and we go all the way to the 21st of June. In this week, we have a lot of ups and downs. We have endings, we have beginnings. So we have Mercury stationing in the sign of Cancer. We also have, of course, the summer solstice. And a few hours later, we have the new moon solar eclipse also at zero Cancer. So there's a lot to uncover and a lot to talk about in this forecast today. And you can read this whole forecast on my website um, as well. So that will be posted by the time this video shows up. And um, so we have a lot to get to, so let's get started. So on Monday, let's start right off with Monday. The moon is still in the sign of Aries from last week. You know, it was in there on Saturday and Sunday. And so the moon in Aries, Monday, fiery energy. Whenever the moon's in a fire sign, we have these opportunities to really emotionally get behind what we need to do. Great way to start and initiate and begin a Monday. But in the evening is when the moon in Aries, this feisty, go-getting, really dynamic, emotional feeling energy makes a square to Pluto and then it squares Jupiter and looking at my ephemeris. But here in the East Coast, it's at 622 and then just before 9 p.m. All of these are in the evening. So what we have with this is this is opportunities for us to really see these squares tend to cause tension. And when we have tension, then we realize we need to make some type of an adjustment. So with the moon in Aries, we're focusing on the very self. So it is rather, it can be selfish, which is fine because lots of times we need a little bit of this energy just to recognize that, hey, I'm not getting what I need. And with it making it square to Pluto and to Jupiter today and this eve that evening, it gives us this opportunity to really step up and to let go of things that um, need to be let go of. We are in the fourth quarter. We're a week away, not quite a week away from the eclipse. That's a new moon eclipse. So we're in this waning period. This whole week is about recognizing what you need and then releasing and letting go of those things that you don't need, like weeding the garden. You know, when once you've got some plants and some things are in there, and I'll use this analogy throughout, um, I always do with the lunar phases, but you know, it, right now is a period of, again, in between eclipses, but we're weeding a few things out. And it can look really messy and finally have a hard time finding even that you have some good plants in your garden, so to speak. So take these opportunities, all right, and do that work that you need to do. Moving on to Tuesday the 16th and Wednesday the 17th, what we have going on here, the moon is now in the sign of Taurus. It's very earthy, very grounded. You know, it's good when it's in this sign because it's in its exaltation, which means it's, it loves this energy. So it helps us to get back to a little more grounded feeling and a little more focus. On Tuesday, early in the morning, boy, on the West Coast, this is like at 4.30 in the morning, East Coast at 7.30 in the morning, the moon makes a square to Saturn. So that moon in Taurus, Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn's retrograde at this point in time. So this is just making a major adjustment first thing in the morning so you can feel some, whatever is up in the air so you can make a decision to let something go so you feel more secure or to bring something into your life so you feel more secure, all right? Now, moving right on to Wednesday, this is when, again, just after midnight on the East Coast, and 9.15 p.m. on the 16th on the West Coast, this is when Moon makes its, and its monthly conjunction to Uranus. And so this is innovative and creative, and it can bring in all kinds of opportunities, but new things. But again, we are in that waning lunar phase, so that means we need to release things and we need to be letting go of things. So I, I see this, I get visuals, you guys know me. 
And if you don't, you're going to let, you're going to find out. Um, I see these two days is like um, the soft serve ice cream. That's like chocolate and vanilla and it swirls up the cone. So we have two things that are happening simultaneously. This happens a lot, but when we have the moon square Saturn on Tuesday, solid, secure, releasing things we don't need so we can feel more secure. And then the moon conjunct Uranus comes through and it just is like innovative and creative and unexpected opportunities or unexpected releases of things. So there we have it, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So now we're going to work, we're going to move on to what Mercury retrograde is all about. I might pop up a couple charts in this one. Okay, now depending on where you live in the world, let me grab my notes are actually behind my screen. I can't see it. Depending on where you live in the world, Mercury is retrograde. Wednesday, June 17th will retrograde 9:59 p.m. Pacific time. And here on the East Coast, it is Thursday, June 18th, and it is at 59 minutes after midnight. And of course, UT is 4.59 a.m. on Thursday, the 18th. So again, that's in the written forecast. You can get those exact dates and numbers if you need it. Now, Mercury makes its retrograde at 14 degrees of Cancer. So what are we gonna do with this? First off, what are the lessons of Mercury retrograde in Cancer? Mercury first off has been in Cancer since May 28th. The lessons of Mercury moving through this sign is Mercury is about communicating. And of course, Cancer is that emotion. It's the moon, it's how we feel. And so we already know, oh, if you don't know, you're not paying attention to anything. And I don't watch a lot of news, well, we know what's going on right now. This country is in a heightened state of emotion. Mercury wants, we need to, we need to speak our truth. We need to speak up. This is also um, remnant, not a remnant, but this is also pieces of Venus retrograde in Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini, okay? So we're getting like a double dose, if not more, of internal emotions coming to the surface because of oppression and how we're feeling. Now that is a national problem and it's a national thing that's going on. And I'm usually very personal and I'm going to get to that. So don't hold, stay, stay with me. But some of the important things that we have going on here, let me grab my, um, see if I can grab my chart. One of the most important things that we have going on here, I'm going to talk while I grab my chart, is that we have um, this retrograde, just as a little lesson, Guys, you know I love teaching. Here we go. I'm going to share this chart quickly, just, just for a minute. Here's the inside is the United States chart, the Sibley chart, they call it. And here's Mercury retrograde on June 18th or the 17th, depending on your location. 14 degrees of Cancer. Our sun, the United States sun, is 13 degrees of Cancer. And so we have a lot going on here. And what that means is like, this really is focusing on the nation. Mercury will, re will retrograde all the way back to five degrees. So it will go all the way back to Jupiter <clears throat> and even close to Venus. So our cancer planets are really getting activated by um, the retrograde of Mercury in the sign of cancer. So it's really coming up. We're born with, um, our nation was established with Mercury retrograde, as you can see right here. And we have a lot of other things going on. I mean, we're, we're ready for our Pluto return. That will be over the next two and a half years. So our country is in, definitely in a deep transformation. And that's just, I'm, I mean, I'm just skidding the surface of this one. There's a lot of people that will talk about this chart. And you can um, check up on them if you like. It's not for me. But I'm going to stop the share now and get back to here. So why did I show you that? It just shows us why the whole country and, you know, is really stirred up about all of the things that are going on. So while Mercury is retrograde over the next three weeks, and then it will take three weeks after that to get out of that area that it was retrograde in, so the shadow phase, um, what, are, what are we going to do with this? Um, Will things slow down while Mercury is retrograde? Maybe a little, but not a lot, because there are so many other things going on, like I just showed you. So there are so many things in play. When we do our forecasts like this, we do have to kind of isolate, but 
we also have to look at the big picture because isolating isn't always as accurate if you don't take into the whole take in the whole picture so the information i give you is looking at the whole picture and i'm giving you specifics about the whole picture so how do you want to use this for you and me again we know what it looks like hold on i'm going to hit pause that's what happens when you live in the city right and your windows are open because it's nice outside oh well i'm leaving it in it's normal <laughs> Oh, where was I? So, so we can see what's going on globally, nationally, right now is more important for us, I think. But however, it's working out for you. If you're feeling emotions coming to the surface, this is an opportunity for you to examine what is coming up for you. Again, Mercury wants us to talk about how we feel. And that might sound too mushy for some of us, but we're going to the energies that are the powers that be are asking us to really step into that and, and step into our truth about how we're feeling and to sharing and to share that right on a personal level as well. It's about home and family and how are you caring and nurturing for yourself? And you're going to hear me say those words in, the, in a few more minutes when I talk about the eclipse. So it's important that you examine that. We've spent a lot of time doing things we've never done before and a lot of time together over these last few months. And so now is also an opportunity for you to let go of things that you know, boy, that really is not good for me. I don't like this. I don't want this in my life anymore, whatever it is. Everybody, we all have our own life circumstances. So there's a lot of releasing that we can do while Mercury is retrograde and while we're still in that waning lunar phase. So take some opportunities here, meditate and just focus in on how you're feeling about certain things. And if you can identify what isn't working for you, then now is a natural opportunity and a natural time for you to release that energy. All right. And release something that you're feeling. Family, is a big thing going on with this cancer energy. It always is. So you may need or want to talk to a family member you haven't talked to in a while or let go of a family member that is just not good for your life and is toxic to you. We all have our own situations. So pick and choose. Not everything that I say here is going to apply to everybody. Not everything it might not even apply to anybody, but those are the ways that I see it here for, for now. So, all right, I'm going to look at my notes and see if I have anything else to say about the Mercury. I do have more, but I want you to go to my website and to read it, okay? nhastrologer.com and click on the written forecast. That's where my blog is, and you can read more details there. All right, moving to the summer solstice. Man, oh, man. All right. And then the solar eclipse. All right, so the summer solstice is, when we find my notes here, it is at 5.44 p.m. Eastern time. So big shift whenever we shift into a new season, you know, those four quarters of the year. It is definitely a big shift, you know, the, in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun is at the height, so everything we're doing is visible for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, physically and energetically. So how we're handling things in the world, especially in my country here, we are really being watched and observed. So this shift is one of the biggest ones that we come through. Southern hemisphere, you guys, this is your winter. So the sun is at the, the lowest. So during this sun in Cancer, um, in the southern hemisphere you basically have this opportunity to really go deep within and to uh, care for yourselves and nurture yourselves since it's winter time down there us here in the united states we have a lot of work to do so do other countries in the northern hemisphere there's a lot going on that's very very public all right so that full so that um summer eclipse uh, the summer solstice 5 44 p.m eastern time 2 44 pacific time on saturday the 20th now just a few hours later we have the solar eclipse new moon solar eclipse also at zero degrees of cancer 
So this is the last Cancer slash Capricorn eclipses that we have for the last 18 months, for the most part, some of them have slipped into the other signs, but for the most part, for the last 18 months, we've, we've been focusing in on Cancer Capricorn, Cancer Capricorn during the eclipse times, meaning very important. Capricorn energy is that foundation that we all have established our routines and our base set on. Now, this new moon eclipse at zero cancer is very important for us to plant new seeds, set new goals, all right? Take opportunities, set these goals based off of things that we've already said how you're caring and nurturing for yourself, what you want for your new period in time. This is an 18 month, well, not 18 month, it's a three year cycle, but I've talked about that before. <laughs> the lunar phases have these great little cycles that we get to work with that happen every nine months. So when we start with the new moon at zero degrees, these are opportunities for, for you to plant new seeds, right? Just put them in the ground and plant them. Set those goals. Now, I know it's not easy to set new goals right now because things do feel like they're up in the air. You know, I used that analogy last week and the week before about puzzle, right? The jigsaw puzzle, it's all over the place. We haven't quite even figured it out, even though all the pieces are there. And right now, I still don't think that even all of the pieces have exploded out yet. I think it's, I saw this vision the other day when I was talking to a couple of clients and, and it was, um, it's like slow motion explosion. And, you know, I don't think even all the pieces have, it hasn't, they haven't even reached their apex yet, at least from what I can feel, just my intuition and I get these visions sometimes. And so uh, what does that mean? That means we're, we're setting goals. We're trying to do normal things and we're trying to set goals, especially when we're in eclipses. Um, while there's so much up in the air, we're not sure if it's, if it's the right goal to set, but we can still do this. We can still do this and eclipses, you know, as we've all said, is very, very powerful. So the eclipse in at zero degrees cancer, we're looking to initiate something. So again, taking care of yourself, that caring, that nurturing energy that is so very important for you and for me. How do I want to take care of my family now? How do I want to take care of myself now? Remember back on May 28th, I mentioned Mercury entered the sign of cancer on that day. And this eclipse now on the 20th, 20th or the 21st, depending on your location, we have this new moon eclipse. So there, so look back to May 28th and look at what's going on on this weekend. So you can initiate things that are important for you because we have all these clues. If we can stop long enough to watch them or listen or feel, right? Because it's cancer. We really need to feel what's going on inside so we can plant those seeds. And even if some of them don't come through, that's okay. We, we can plant, you know, you can plant a ton of seeds, take out the whole packet and plant them all. And then you're going to thin them out later when we get further down the road. So do that for yourself. And then to take this even to a more personal place, you're going to want to see where it is in your own chart. And so to see where that is, again, you know, the houses are all sectioned out. Let me see if I can share my screen again. I don't think I have anything up, do I? Yes, I do. I have that up. Let's see. What is this one? Here's the summer solstice. Here's the eclipse. This is just what it looks like at um, the latitude and longitude of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's a little bit different. And right in that area, Uranus is on the ascendant. So that eclipse in PA will definitely um, <clears throat> create some exciting news. We have a lot going on. Nothing's, nothing's settled. Nothing's complete yet. And so the best thing to do um, with these zero degrees is to do the best you can. Plant your seeds, set your intentions, expect new people to come into your life, expect new opportunities to show up, and you'll pick and choose as we move through the summer and get further down the road when we have a lot of activity going on once Mars gets into Aries. But in the meantime, find out, figure out what makes you feel okay, 
how you want to take care of yourself, how you want to take care of your family, especially comparing it to what we all went through in March and April when things got shut down completely. No, no panic. You're not allowed to panic. We already went through that. But how do you want to feel more in control of your family and your life? All right. There's always so, so much more. And you know how to reach me right through here, my website, nhastrologer.com. Please come there. And this is my profession. So you're welcome to come and book sessions and get your private information. Patreon, I'm also there. I have a membership service. I have three different tiers, actually five different tiers where you can support me and get patron content only. And um, I hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Please share this video in your media platforms. I appreciate it very much. Blessings. Namaste.